this is Animat, and welcome back to the Muppet Vlog! Now this time we're going to be looking into the 12th episode of the second season of The Muppet Show, which features the one and only Bernadette Peters. Now, for those of you who do want to get yourselves familiar with Bernadette Peters, she is an absolute master of stage and screen, for which she has won several Tonys, Grammys, and even a Golden Globe. Now, specifically into her stage career, she is very well known to appear in the works of Stefan Sonnenheim. Specifically, she has appeared in Mac and Mabel, Sunday in the Park with George, Song and Dance, Into the Woods, Annie Get Your Gun, and the revival of Gypsy. And specifically, Annie Get Your Gun and I believe Song and Dance, she actually won the Tony Award for. And she has also appeared on many different films that she has been recognized for. Uh, some of these would include Silent Movie, The Jerk, and uh, Pennies from Heaven, in which the last one, she actually did win the Golden Globe. And uh, she has also appeared in several animated works as well. Uh, specifically, you might recognize her in Beauty and the Beast, The Enchanted Christmas as Angelique. Uh, she has also appeared as Sophie in Anastasia. Uh, she also appeared as Sue in The Land Before Time 10, The Great Long Neck Migration, and she has also appeared as Glinda the Good Witch in Legend of Oz, Dorothy's Return. Oh god, that was her? Oh god, now I'm get oh god, I'm, I'm, I'm actually getting all those bad memories back, it's just like, oh god. Wait, that's Bernadette Peters? Oh god, no, get it out of my head, okay. But anyways, that's pretty much Bernadette Peters in general. And going into the episode that she has appeared in, uh, The Muppet Show, I'll be honest, well, well, what she did herself is actually fantastic. In fact, she actually was nominated for an Emmy for her appearance in The Muppet Show. But I will say, in terms of the episode itself, it doesn't really feel that organized. I mean, the ideas are there, they're just not well placed. Uh, the episode pretty much starts off with Miss Piggy getting absolutely jealous with Kermit because he starts off with the opening number with Miss Mousy uh, doing a song called How Could You Believe Me? So they were both doing a duet and like Miss Piggy is just like, you, you could tell throughout the entire episode she's just full on jealous of Miss Mousy being close to Kermit and even having a duet with Kermit. And uh, often, like, you would see her, uh, like, even up there with Statler and Waldorf, like, pretty much directing, like, their hate. Like, where is it okay to love and where is it okay to hate? And, uh, you know, that that is pretty funny, but unfortunately, those moments rarely happen. And while that is happening, there is another story that is going on that this time it actually revolves around Robin. Now, this is not the first time that we see Robin in The Muppet Show, but this is one of the first times that we actually see a story that's completely centered around Robin. And basically, he does, like, he feels way too small around the Muppet Theater, and he feels like because he's so small, nobody really notices him. So he wanted to run away, but Bernadette Peters pretty much convinced him to stay, and pretty much the whole story just ends off with Robin wanting to do a number, which Kermit lets him, but uh, he only lets Robin doing a song called uh, I'm Five, which is pretty much like this cute little number about like how Robin's a big boy and now he's five years old and stuff like that, so that's pretty much the payoff. And in terms of the Robin story, I feel like it could have had heart. I see where they were going, but I feel like everything is a bit disorganized. Like, in the middle of it, when Robin wanted to run away, but, like, he had a chat with Bernadette Peters, uh, they were pretty much singing the song, I'm trying to find... Uh, oh, yeah, and they were just singing Just One Person, and in that one, it feels a bit like... It's a finale, like, this is the, this is the, the musical number where they, they, it would be, like, the grand finale of the episode, because, like, you got Bernadette Peters singing with Robin, and then, like, you got all the other Muppets coming out, uh, like, all coming out, and they were just singing the song with Robin. It does feel like something that would just finish it off, and it would resolve the whole situation. You know, like, a, a good example would be the last episode I saw with Dom DeLuise, where they pretty much got this entire story going on with Miss Piggy, and the finale would be 
um, but, um, Dom DeLuise singing with Miss Piggy to make her feel better called uh, We We Got Us, and then suddenly all the other Muppets would come in. It's a very similar sense, but it feels rather weird that they suddenly put it in the middle of the episode and make the whole payoff of it is that Robin actually does sing a number in the, in the episode singing I'm Five. Now, I feel like everything it just just feels disorganized there like if they start off with the like if, if they start off the whole bit with um kermit uh, like robin doing the sketch of i'm five and suddenly nobody really notices him and then he wants to run away like that would have really worked that would have given the episode a lot more heart but i don't know it just feels like it's a bit mi disorganized and plus the fact that they often would get distracted with another plot line of the one I mentioned before of Miss Piggy absolutely jealous of Miss Mousy. Like that one the, like that plot line right there could have worked on its own, but for for some reason it just feels a bit wasted and I don't know, it's just that like it could have been fantastic to look into Miss Piggy's jealousy when another girl would come in. Now, I know in the late like I know in later seasons or later episodes like maybe in this season as well that they are bringing, like, they would bring that back in. Not necessarily with Miss Mousy, but uh, they would bring in with other characters as well that Miss Piggy would get jealous of. But, I don't know, I feel like they got something with this whole Miss Mousy plot, but it really didn't work out as well. Like, it, it wasn't really as explored enough. Now, at the same time, there are some other sketches as well. Like, they're more individual sketches, but uh, some of them really are, like, the highlights of it. Uh, there was one where Sam the Eagle actually reads the story of the ant and the gra grasshopper, and of course, like, since it is the Muppets, uh, I'm not gonna say, like, what happens, but, you know, just expect the unexpected. And then there was also another one, we got, uh, the Swedish chef with a chicken. Uh, like, nece like, mostly he just wants the chicken to have an egg, but again, uh, completely great punchline at the end. Uh, but then we also got another one with uh, Dr. Bunsen Honeydew and Beaker, and finally, this is the one, like, now we're, gar we're starting to see some momentum with the sketches of uh, uh, Bunsen Honeydew and Beaker, and, like, you know, we're starting to see, like, the comedy bits that they can really bring in, and, like, how they're more prominent in there, like... The, like, this is the kind of sketches that, like, you could tell that we're going to get a lot more of, and I'm really glad because, like, that one is actually really hilarious. And, uh, oh, and actually another one is actually the Muppet News Flash. Uh, it's a, it's very similar in tone with the Swedish Chef bit in that episode. Definitely fantastic. Uh, but also, oh yeah, there is actually another really weird sketch, actually. It, like, honestly, it, like, I don't know how to feel, but it was just, like, it was kind of weird but funny at the same time. It's actually called the Sheik of Araby, and uh, this actually features um, Uncle Deadly, and like you have this entire Arabic setting where Uncle Deadly and there's this woman singing uh, the Sheik of Araby. But the weird thing about that whole sketch is that. You, like, it's actually the woman singing with uh, Uncle Deadly of the Sheik of Araby because, oh my god, I don't think I've ever seen a Muppet so sexualized before. Like, um, I don't know how, to, it's like, it's so weird talking about this about a Muppet, but, like, she got, she, <laughs> she's got huge tracts of land! I guess that's the best way to put it. Uh, so yeah, with her, um, huge tracts of land, like, what, like, ah, huh, fudge, well, okay, I, like, I gotta quote different movies to describe it, but, uh, when she got it, she flaunts it, that, like, that's the whole thing, like, she knows what she has, and my god, she'll take every opportunity to let loose and show the world, like, the, the huge, the, the huge pair that she has, like, I, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't mind talking about it, I love it, but it's just that, like, when you're talking about it on a Muppet, it's like, that's kind of a different level, <laughs> I, I don't know, it's just so weird, honestly, uh, but honestly, yeah, um, the only thing that I didn't mention yet is actually the performance of Bernadette Peters, and yeah, she absolutely is a highlight in this entire episode, because you could definitely tell how she has grown from a musical background and 
Um, like her, like her song and dance routines are definitely the real highlights of this episode. Uh, when she would sing uh, "Little One Step, Two Step" with uh, some of the monsters, like uh, uh, Sweetums, Thog, and Timmy Monster, like that one is definitely well choreographed. That was definitely well sung, like, lo like definitely well sung. And then there was also uh, like the one that I've already mentioned, just one person. Like I said before, like it would have been a great finale song, but I don't know why it's suddenly in the middle. And then like. You got Applejack. Uh, that that one is more like a country song, and uh, like uh, we got Bernadette Peters singing it with the country group. Uh, like, it, and it's kind of weird, honestly. Like looking back at it now, like you can definitely tell how in the last season you got the hillbilly group, but now you got like, uh, like you got this new group right now, which is not really that hillbilly, but you can tell that. Um, like, they're just more country, and they, like, th these guys have already appeared before, like, uh, with Steve Martin, and even in the, in the last episode with Dom DeLuise, but, you know, it's kind of interesting to see them, uh, instead of, like, the usual hillbilly group that they build up so much in Season 1, but then again, in Season 1, they tried to build up so many things that th eventually they would never come back in here, like, case in point, Hilda and George the Janitor. But yeah, overall, I would say that this is the kind of episode where the really, like, where the small things are the real highlight of this episode. And, like, whatever kind of plot line that they try to do, it just honestly feels a bit like a mess. It just kind of feels a bit disorganized. There are some plot points that the payoff doesn't just feel that well. And, uh, honestly, like, and there are some plot points that they just, there aren't really well looked upon. They're just kind of shafted on the side for many of the other sketches to appear but this is not a bad episode at all the individual sketches are absolutely great they're hilarious and uh, bernadette peters was absolutely wonderful in this episode with her song and dance routine it's absolutely fantastic but overall as an episode as a whole it just doesn't really work out but uh, if you can check out the bits individually, they are absolutely fantastic. But anyways, that is pretty much it for this episode, so I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching, and hopefully in the next episode, they'll pretty much get their plot lines in order, and maybe we'll have a good cohesive story that we can follow. But we'll only know until the next episode that we'll see it, so until next time, see you later dudes!